good morning good morning and welcome to a brand new day beautiful day of looking at the papers on bop 90.3 fm here in lagos how are you doing i hope you're good and i hope that life is treating you well i'm cordelia Obeng. we'll be looking at the front page review the stories that made it to the front page we'll take a look at them and maybe glide in here and there to pick this and that i'll be joined later on by rufa Oseni and Ejiro Mukoro, they'll be taking more in-depth look at some of the stories they've chosen to talk about. And I'll be expecting you to be a part of it later on. All I just ask you to do is keep listening and stay with us. All right, let's start off. My quote for the day is a popular quote, which we all know, it takes a thief to catch a thief, is a saying, is something we should know. It takes a thief to catch a thief now from the papers this morning let's see who is catching who and if anything like that does happen let's start off with the punch the front page of the punch the major headline is presidency backs cardoso vows for the clamp down on racketeers um presidency backs cardoso and plans for the clamp down on racketeers and it also has uh, uh, the riders Agency will step up enforcement against racketeers to ensure Nigerians are not cheated presidency. Tinubu financial engineer expects stronger Naira in quarter one 2025 spokesman tells Nigerians. This is uh, looking at the rising Naira value. And uh, just by the mass we have Coastal Road Project, not wasteful, Umahi slams Atiku. Above the mast, we have this one, Edel Victory, let's build Nigeria together, Tinubu governors, senators, tell Nigerians. Falcons play goalless with South Africa, qualify for Olympics. Then dealers demand 850 naira per litre as diesel costs as Dangote marketers meet. And we also have the sad one. Fire raises 14 Lagos market buildings for structures collapse. Very sad. Uh, Ondo, APT panel screens Ayedita, I pronounce Ayedatiwa, Akintenewa, 14 others on Friday. Gunmen kill five in Benue, 17 victims get mass burial. Very sad. Impeachment, Shaibu writes CJN. APC members won against ex-deputy governor's report, I mean return. Those are some of the stories that you can find if you check out the front page of the Punch newspaper. Let me quickly take one or two stories um, in depth from that one, from the Punch. And the rising Naira value, uh, the reason that is happening, the presidency said on Tuesday that the concerted efforts of the Yemi Kadoso led central bank of Nigeria aimed at establishing the Naira alliance with President Bola Tinubu's multifaceted approach to reading the nation's foreign exchange market of malign actors and sharp practices. It also vowed to continue its campaign against racketeers, urging Nigerians to expect a stronger Naira that would reflect in a significant drop in the prices of essential commodities by the first quarter of 2025. And I think to the average Nigerian, 2025 sounds very far. Something drastic has to be done. And one also wonders, these players they are talking about, are they the common man? Question. Now, the one on dealers demanding 850 naira per liter for diesel, as Dangote and the marketers will be meeting, uh, has to do with the fact that the marketers are saying that giving them at... 1225 naira a liter uh, from the indigenous refinery was rather high because the commodity was being produced in nigeria and not imported i think they have something valid going on there what do you think you'll be free to share with us later on there's this report from the punch too that talks about 39 lecturers who've been indicted for sexual harassment in five years 
<laughs> that is rather small because the way students are complaining, it may just be a little more. But 39, well, I hope that they are dealt with for, you know, for them to know that it's not the way to go. You lack power to Sakabure. Labour Party tells NLC. The struggle continues and they are saying that we do not even know this particular committee that is talking right now. It is something that was just set up by the, the, I mean, the Labour chair or president to just fight a fight so they don't really care. The leadership of the Labour Party this they said on Tuesday, they are warning the Nigerian Labour Congress against trying to hijack the political platform, saying it lacked the power to sack the Julius Abure National Working Committee as recently declared. All right, Aluta Continua, rightly or wrongly, that is what they seem to be saying there. All right, let's take a look quickly at another paper for this morning. And uh, which one should we be looking at right now? Um, let's take a look at the Nigerian Tribune. And it has the same story as the NLC one uh, above the mass. We have also that UBA gross earnings rises by 143%. Profit hits 757.5 billion. Uh, all these figures are calling. One wonders how in this economy but they are not doing badly i hear nigerian tribune also has tinubu calls for unity to build nigeria president atiku obi governor scan greet muslims that is as per edel victory security agencies deploy personnel nationwide then dollar bribery allegation kanu assembly assembles 15 witnesses for ganduje wife six others trial <laughs> arraignment fixed for april 17. okay that they won all right and we also have here disregard calls for pdp chairman's resignation reps minority caucus that's what they're saying rainstorm displaces 3000 and affects over 100 houses in kogi community Atiku demands full disclosure on Lagos Calabar Highway project. I'll tell you more about that. Pandem okay, pandemonium as four buildings collapse, 14 others gutted in Lagos market fire. And one thing I read there that pained me was the fact that they said that they had challenges with water. 2024, we're still having challenges with water when there is a problem with fire. It's very sad and painful. And let me quickly uh, give you a quick overview of that call by Atiku that you should give us a full disclosure. If we move to The Guardian, you'll find that story there and you can read the full story there from The Guardian too, aside punch and you also find that not just Atiku, more people are beginning to query this uh guardian has it as more queries protests against lagos calabar coastal road project despite defense you know my came out to defend and uh, he was rather not too um civil in his response to Atiku, and Atiku responded again and i'll quickly read to you in his own response he listed he had seven major questions or some major questions that needed answers he said one how much is the total cost of the lagos calabar coastal highway two why is the project being funded by the nigerian government despite being a ppp three why is the project taking off from chaguri's eco atlantic why is 1.6 1.06 trillion naira being spent on the pilot phase which is just 47 kilometers why did the 1.06 trillion naira not get the approval of the national assembly why wasn't there a competitive bidding for the project and finally how did the tinubu administration get the design as well as the right of way in just seven months since it claims the past administration of good luck jonathan and muhammad buhari never touched the project salient questions being asked by atiku there i will also find that one of those who is kicking against this is the her team 
uh, one time presidential, I mean, gubernatorial aspirant here in Lagos, and Doherty is complaining and wondering how do we deal with things like landmark and so on that you'd want to pull down. What about the shanties? How are you going to deal with these? Many, many questions, and I, I think our analysts today may just address some of those, and they'll be joining me any moment from now. But before then, we have the Daily Times 2, uh, Kanu government to Arun Ganduji, April 17. There are other major headlines there you could check out. And The Guardian has 179 million Nigerians in dire straits lack access to portable water nationwide. Also has a picture there of the fire that, took, uh, that happened in Dosumu. And this is twice in 30 days. Very sad. It talks about Abure, the Costa Road, and other things. The one about water, that one is a major thing. And one wonders, how come in Nigeria, it seems that we provide everything for ourselves? That is what this report seems to be questioning too. Rufai Oseni will be joining us soon. He's on the line already. And we will be joining, Ejiro will also be joining us. Rufai, good morning. Morning, how are you? Bless you. Bless you too. How are you today? You good? Yes, good, good, good. Sprite. Uh, just finished playing tennis. So. Oh, you've played tennis this early. Oh, boy, I envy you. I for like to play, <laughs> but I should say I go faint. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. That's nice, more small. Okay, cool. I had a 6, had a 6 a.m. tennis class. So good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'll consider it myself. Maybe I'll yeah. play, may I not talk. All right, so the papers this morning, Ejiro joins us shortly, and I'd like to hear from you. I, I think, let's just start with this coastal road. You heard the questions that Atiku asked. Those seven questions, major questions, I think we'd like to have answers, uh, your response. No, but it's true. And I think I'd like to join other women in Nigeria to ask questions. How much is the full cost of the road? You can't be telling me that about 47 kilometers of that road is going to the trillions. Hmm. And you're not telling me the full cost of the 700 kilometers. This was a road that, as that when it was first talked about, it was 11.7 billion. Then the next cost was about uh, how much? It was 11.1 billion. It's just like because they didn't have the time to do it. Now, all of a sudden, you are telling me otherwise. You are telling me otherwise. You are telling me otherwise. Then you now want to use that road to destroy livelihoods of people. If you destroy landmark, do you know how much jobs will be lost? And not just landmark. Create, we also have the, the, the twin landmark. waters and other things do there. Want, do you want to cause trouble for us living on the island? I will tell you, I've been living in here for close to 15 years. Before that landmark came, we that we lived around Sinai, and Ijo, and some other areas like that, and I just said, we couldn't, what is it called, pack our cars outside. Our friends couldn't come to us and pack our cars outside. Hmm. All those boys would come and jack everything. Imagine. Still break up and all of that. But since this landmark came, those boys started, you know, some of them were absorbed in some places to go. So you want to throw them out of work now and cause insecurity for all of us? It is a major challenge, and you see, even Doherty is saying you have to consider huh. these things properly. And uh, let's say hello to uh, Ejiro, who just joined us from Abuja, too. Ejiro, good morning. Good morning to you, Cordelia. Good morning. And uh, uh, we were talking about the coastal roads. Rufai just made that point. Where are you going to throw these people to? How come you're spending so much money for how many kilometers? Uh, your take on this? Um, yes, I, I think um, we need a more Nigerian government with conscience, with a feeling of humanity within themselves, with respect for the rule of law and processes, one who understands the power of communicating with people and not thinking that this is a draconian society where they feel that authoritarian approaches to handling issues is the way to go. Yeah. Uh, because we've seen this time and again operating where the, the power of the might is used to oppress 
mm. are inconsequential. And that is because when we look at the way the Nigerian constitution is, we will understand that the rights of a Nigerian life and the life of a Nigerian, it is not something we give dignity to. Mm. A situation where a few individuals we just sit up somewhere and just decide that look these are coastal areas um they are good for businesses the tourism they have high potential for direct access to the sea and we can do all stuff of uh, um uh, we can use it for other kinds of uh, our wings and caprices uh, it's a situation we need to begin to really call to action and i'm happy that a few cso's have come on board and are saying no this can't be done we don't want another similar case that happened uh, with the makoko makoko area right mm. and the what do you call this other uh, side of nigeria which is also a coastal area the fact that the nigerian government wait for things to get so bad Act, mm. that communities that are disadvantaged are not well taken care of that there are no proper planning directed at these places specifically for their growth and development is also a concern okay, because Ejiro. we don't have proper city planning structures and infrastructures in place okay Jiro, you just pause a while there uh rufai th there's yeah. just thing i've been thinking of where were these people when these buildings started coming up for instance landmark did not just appear from nowhere you did not just wake up one morning that you want to have a coastal road where were you when all these developments took place and you you start from uh they they refer to it as chaguris eco atlantic and for the first phase you end that lucky free, free trade zone for all that money so i'm wondering where were they when all the development took place for you to wake up one morning and say that we may demolish all these things? Let me tell you the truth about that project. That project was first conceived under Gulag Jonathan. The detour into those beach areas were not the original plan for that project. Uh -huh. So this is a violation of the detour. They purchased the property for landmark in 2017 because I have a couple of other people that own beach, you know, beach uh, resorts around that area. They purchased that property in 2007. Some just even did their PPP with uh, the Oniru royal family. The road was supposed to pass through Water Corporation Drive originally. Imagine. This detour is not part of the original plan. And another question we should ask, where is the tender that high tech bid it for? to be able to get that contract. you know they said what? oh it's ppp so they didn't have to be they are bringing the money and they are bringing the money but then you are giving them 1.06 trillion naira meanwhile you say it's ppp are you there hello, hello. Mm -hmm. yeah you're back all of it he was supposed to be like a ppp it was not government supposed to remove money from their pocket to do it i tell you it was supposed to be a build operate and transfer kind of thing but all of a sudden Government is not removing money out of their pocket to do it. Let them tell us the bid process. Why is this process shrouded in a lot of secrecy? Hmm. And they should give us the empirical number because it doesn't make sense. See, if you say 47 kilometers of a road is costing close to a trillion, are you telling me that 700 kilometers of road, what will it cost? <laughs> and some other people have made every argument. Why can't they start from other parts? Why is this this interest? Yeah. And we all know what happens in Nigeria. There's something called state catch-up. We are all aware. We cannot deny the tedious link between some businessmen and government officials. What we are saying is let common sense prevail. My maths teacher, Mrs. Brimo, will always say common sense is not common. But let <laughs> common sense prevail on this matter. All right. You can't rob Peter to, to pay Paul. Paul. Now it's like they're even robbing Peter, robbing Paul, and even rob, robbing Akin to everything. Rob, 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 rob. Uh, hey, Jiro, you there? Okay, the line has got, okay. All right, we're going to uh, get a Jiro back now. So, um, the next story you would like to look at, uh, Rufai? Hello, Rufai, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh. Yeah. My network is good, though. It's, it's good. not me. Oh. I'm on 5G. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my network is good i'm saying it now okay uh, okay so i'm saying what's the next story you like to look at from all the ones we've we've taken this morning there's that one too on on the fact that water nigerians are almost providing for themselves 170 something million people are in their straits because no no clean portable water 
there's no portable water. The last time I had an encounter with Governor Sowolu, I asked him, I said, when are you going to do water? It's a sad thing that Lagos does not have a viable public water. Mm. The quality has since dropped, except for a few areas and except for a few other, uh, what's it called, neighbors in other parts that say, okay, they still get water from public water. Most of the water works need a lot of additions. And it's the state government that will do this. I mean, I remember back in the days of portable clean water, where you open up the tap and you drink portable water. Mm. Till I was, you know, close to my, what is it called, ages. Till I was over 10 years of age, I did not know a lot of bottled water. The only bottled water I knew was the water I got from my tap and I put in the fridge to chill. Yes, yeah, so or in, in a, a, a glass bottle. Yeah, on, on glass bottle. That was the only bottled water I knew. Oh, you buy ice water outside. I hated that one. <laughs> no, I never even bought ice water because me, I'm the DSCP king now. The DSCP can bomb me. So water ran from the tap. Mm. So for us to now see a community, even in my village, Odobolu, I remember, we used to wait for public water. Yeah. And it was good and it was efficient. But all of a sudden, there's just been a decadence in the system. You know, they tried having a water bill, which yes. was also a way to be able to encroach on land mm. before that was existed. The government was supposed to find a way to be able to... Be, and only to think they get big grants from top international organizations. And nothing comes out of it. And nothing comes up. Another story I would like to tell. A lot of people are not seeing this story. See, I favor the defense of the Naira. My argument has always been defend the Naira until you get your fundamentals right. But as we speak, just to also remind us that in this defense of the Naira, we should now start thinking of not only hot money, which are FPIs, but foreign direct investments. And now we can get a lot of that in. The problem is that we're not getting a lot of foreign direct investment. And that has to do with ease of doing business and the general economic malaise in Nigeria. And I'll tell you why. There's a story in these days today that was talking about the fact that in this couple of, since February, where we started, February 26th or 27th, when CBN issued the circular to start selling to BDC and defending the Naira heavily, we have spent over 595 million dollars to defend the naira mm. and what we are doing is the quick approach which is not going to yield long-term results which is looking for hot money now we are selling lots of bonds we have an open market i was talking to some of my friends that were partners you know in top finance firms all around the world they said these days what they just do is they sit down and, and they just buy nigeria bonds and they go to sleep because they know they will cash out our bond interest alone in this year is going to trillions. So the approach now should be how can we really get real sustainable money, which is foreign direct investment, not just foreign portfolio investments. Mm. I love the defense of the currency because it will stop and stand the tide of inflation. And like you've been saying, inflation has been going on the downwards. I mean, in, the numbers have not started to move down, but mm. you can see cost of goods have started to reduce in some areas, like the cost of cement that went up in February when the speculators were having the blow at the Naira. Yeah. Cost of cement is already down to about 9K, 8K, 5 in some places from about 13,000 that it went to then. And some of that costs are going down. And that's the essence of curtailing, you know, the hike in the Naira to the dollar rate because it's a pass-through effect of Forex. But also... Now we should now change the approach from FPI, foreign portfolio investment, to foreign direct investment. This hot money tenure cannot continue. And that's yeah. why I say let's bring real development. So we want to ask President Tinu again. All the Saudi investors and the Kuwaiti people that said they were going to bring 14 billion, India said they were going to bring 10 billion. Where are all those monies? They are, because they are you coming. keep going and going to these places and say they said they will give you I say they will dash you money and they will bring money into Nigeria. Where are all those investments? How quick are we able to fast track those investments? Hmm. Because it's when those investments come, we'll be able to see the knock-on effect on the economy and things start to trickle down properly. Okay. Uh, Adriel, which other story would you want to look at now? Yeah, I, I find fascinating the story that has to do with the fact that it's actually four to five times more costly to trade uh, and do business in Nigeria and Africa 
And that data is quite uh, that the cost of trade is five times higher in Nigeria than in the U.S. And this data is coming from the World Bank. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that this perspective is being thrown up here because for a long time, uh, the the cost of trade in Nigeria didn't used to be as expensive uh, prior to this time. We had a commensurate balancing, but now what we're beginning to see is that earlier the conversation had always been the lack of power and the lack of proper roads, right? Connecting roads and even connecting uh, border points between different African countries amongst themselves. Right now, what we're beginning to see that is adding to the disturbing concern for the cost of doing business and trading in Nigeria and Africa is as a result of some of the insecurity problems they're having. And then with the high cost of transportation, that is another uh, concern for us. And that ties into the other story where the various agencies are meeting with Dangote Refinery to say, you know what, diesel needs to come down from the 1,200 per liter price to probably 800 or 850. Even at 800, 850, that is still a lot because like a radio station, for example, the cost of running the overhead in terms of just consuming diesel for 20 hours a day, multiply that over a period of one month, that is a lot of money. So we need to begin to, as a people, as a matter of urgency and a bit of shame on us mm. to know that we have to tackle the issue of power. We have to tackle the issue of infrastructure. We have to tackle the matter concerning how we've treated the insurgency and terrorism in Nigeria with kid gloves that is not tolerable, that is unforgivable, that we've allowed it last since 2006 till this time at the rate that it currently is. So I believe that now is a good time for even Nigerians themselves to also watch how they behave. I've noticed a pattern amongst Nigeria that the arbitrary, this laissez-faire approach to business, which is not bad, but at the same time, they, we live in a country where we are also an exploitative people, that we are naturally exploitative. We commit evil upon ourselves. For example, um, simple products like um, maybe this um, milk uh, or three-in-one shake of some kind of um, uh, beverage that people drink. In some, if in a, in a street, if you go on a street where you have collections of kiosk and all of that, that same three-in-one mix of beverage, one person will sell it 160, mm -hmm. another will sell it 150, somebody else will sell it 200, and another person will sell it for 250. So this arbitrary lack of pricing regulation in Nigeria is also a fundamental problem. I cannot understand for the life of me why we will feel that one day today the price is this, tomorrow the price is something else. On the same streets, we cannot have a uniform price. Right. So price regulatory system is very key. We need the body involved in that to begin to sit up. And Nigerians really need to do better. Our government, our state governors, for example, and the local government communities and the global government chairman, these are systems. These are important structures that are not working effectively as they should all right limited time i know you guys have so let's wrap this up with this one pick any of these to talk about okwama army board begins sitting today in worry and the okwama community they've said we're not going to be there because our people they're in the bushes they can't come out okolobo said they will be there we also have the story of epis the alan oyema is saying that they are trying to push us Foreign airlines are trying to uh, use pricing, underpricing, to send us out of the space. And the last one, where Northern okay. elders are saying, "Ah, we regret voting for Tinubu. Yay, this is painful." Okay, okay. which one do you okay. like? I, I want to just pick the three. Number okay. one, uh, I, I, I prefer the last conversation. <laughs> okay, after Rufai, yeah, Jiro chairman. will come to you. All right. Okay. I, I don't. Oh, oh think sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Okay, I don't think in the interest of fairness, it will be right just for the army board alone to sit on this Okwama incident. I think that's a set up a national panel of inquiry, sort of like a, a, an Oputa panel of some sort. It has independence, led by stakeholders in the civil society and across societal interest group, to be able to get to the remote causes of this Okwama incident. Yeah. I don't think the Americans sit over it because they too they were dramatic person in all of this. That's true. Secondly, and for the interest of peace, because if we don't do that, that will also continue. And I'm probably sure at some point 
once the community get themselves together, it's just going to be like another case of Odi where they took them to court and government had to pay compensation. Secondly, the price under court has started, and that's where the Nigerian government needs to protect airlines like Airpeace. Exactly. All of a sudden, Air France is now carrying UK return 900k. These were the same people that were carrying over 2 million before. Once Airpeace came up with the pricing, price undercut, one point, at 1.2, they are now carrying 900 because they know they can undercut with price and they have volumes. They have volume, true. And they have I the might. I think this is where federal anti competition should come in so that there should be some level of you know price regulation. And also, government too should bolster airlines like FP so they can compete effectively because they're going to undercut the markets. So, mm -hmm. and what they will do is they, they call it price dumping. When you undercut the markets and you get your price variation back, when you can hold, when they can strangulate airpiece out of the market, the next thing they do is they now settle down and now dictate the pricing again. That's what they all do. And Nigeria should never forget that if not because of airpiece's intervention, we will not be able to enjoy the lower price we now enjoy. So this was the thing that they were carrying over three million for a while. So at least they could carry nine hundred k before, but they didn't carry. Once airpiece started with their price, now they want to start fighting back in the market. And I hear they might even go lower than that 900k. Someone that bought ticket yesterday, KLM was selling me, it was 906. Mm. Yes. This was something they were selling over 2M. Imagine. 906 now. Air France KLM. Oh. So, let's look at this thing considerably. Let's look at these things considerably. And um, I, I, I think that's about so let, I'll yield the floor to Okay, Ejiro. Hey, Ejiro, hey, can we yeah. have a mic? Okay, okay, so you said you prefer talking about the airpiece one? Oh, yes. For me, that comes very close to home because I am very concerned that Nigerians uh, allow themselves to be so exposed to be constantly used as a cash cow by foreign organizations. The fact that we've not been able to tackle our aviation industry and the entire ecosystem as we should is a shame and the fact that oyema is trailing the blaze in this direction and showing that things can work in this industry he has proven it over and over and again that the ministry of aviation as a whole has not only fallen short of his duty and responsibility in terms of regulation in terms of managing its foreign arrangements and also positioning the nigerian air whatever name we call it today in its proper perspective because we are over 200 million and there are over 50 million people over time called crystal crops that travels from nigeria to other parts of the world now we the the british um the, the british um airlines the american airlines and the other foreign african and other uh, non-african airlines understand that nigeria is a rich place and we have seen how this arbitrary raise in increment of flight fares arbitrarily and it's so insane where a situation we were paying re more recently until airpiece came in to slash the price from 2.5 million to 1.2 million to and fro how how did, what was the justification for that ab abnormal and arbitrary mm -hmm. and uh, 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 un unnecessary increments in the price that is because one nigerian uh, air space right hasn't taken into cognizance how significant his role is and like i said earlier the nigerian society is such that it does not respect and treat the nigerian person as an individual yeah. the moment we understand that the the role the lps is saying and take it right now where he's even calling out on other airlines to join the fray here to say look we've got to crash the price this is competitive marketing strategy and i think it's good i'm happy that uh, he's coming out to speak about this and i want nigerians to learn how to patronize homemade home yeah. products or services it's time we begin to boycott some of these systems so that they begin to respect us and treat us right because what we see here is the same thing we're seeing with the visa fees visa fees have just been habitually stated and now they are treating us as if we're nobody giving us long-term visa interview times over a year something that usually is just within that same day you go in you get the appointment with ease or within a month or within a few weeks now we're seeing a situation where we're being treated with disdain disregard and utter disrespect so right. i feel nigerian people as a whole must begin to understand their worthiness and begin to take action in that regard thank you very much Ejiro mukoro for joining us from abuja and fight the fire 
Thank you so much, Rufaro Seni. I wish both of you the best of the day and have a very, very good morning. Thank you, guys. Bless you. Bless you so much. Bless you. Thank right. you so much, Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. You're listening to VOP 90.3 FM, and we've had Rafael Seni and Ejiro Umukoro joining us as the analysts for this morning. They've looked at several stories. It's now time for you to join us. You can call 0700 903 903 903. And when you're calling, please turn down the volume on your radio set. We all must be civil, and each person has like 90 seconds to say their mind. And you you could also call on WhatsApp 0817-175-6338. You can watch us on all um, the social media handles, especially on YouTube at VOP 903 FM. So join us as we move on straight to you. Good morning. Hello, morning. Oh, something is a bit dodgy there. All right. We'll, we'll try uh, and take the call. We can see it um we can see it ring and please sorry about that you can you can call back 0700 903 903 but i quickly take your messages let's do this on youtube if he in came you said sustainable builds lagos state without hospital facilities and tap water mm. the frankie dixon the lagos calabar road project is clear indication of lack of transparency by government that give rise to zero trust in government by the citizens public funds must be used judiciously for the benefit of the people advanced adam good morning all good morning to you too good morning Ola Dewali. thank you you said every foreign operator will I can really okay I can really see this thing that is written here but I'll, I'll check it out will badger Nigerians cause of leadership I, I don't know if that's exactly what he wrote there morning to you too let's go to uh, whatsapp I have your message dial from Fagba you're saying that since the president came into power he has been putting square pegs around holes look at all his ministers all have been you feel they've been disastrous what do you expect from this cash and carry government that forced themselves into power through votes okay so what topic are we looking at here okay you just talked uh, generally without picking anything you're just responding generally naira is gaining ground which is good one but food items and goods are going up on daily basis dangote should try and listen to marketers at least let nigerians have breath of fresh air people are suffering no fuel subsidy no electricity subsidy so nigerians are not getting anything from the government too bad this is from senator from isola i have you here frank nero from the u.s the Kano state government and state assembly are giving Ganduje process by inviting witnesses in the charge against him. All government officials that stole public money must be held accountable and punished accordingly to deter others. May God help and heal our land. I say amen to that. Uh, good morning to you, His Royal Highness B.C. Wonko. Uh, you expect that whatever that is coming out from Dangote refinery will be considerable as locally refined products. I don't see why the products should be sold at high price. I totally blame our government for failing to put our refineries in order, thereby making life very difficult for Nigerians. And for the answers, Alaji Atiku Abubakar is seeking from President Tinubu's government on Lagos Calabar coastal ways. It's unfortunate that he will never get any tangible answer. Instead, he will only receive backlash and criticisms for wanting to know the truth. This is exactly the situation we found ourselves, and it is very sad and bad. Please, uh, I'd like you to try the WhatsApp uh, line when you uh, call in, 0817-175-6338. Call that line, 0817-175-6338. Call us via WhatsApp. Uh, is like the mobile line is having a mind of its own it has headache right now headache major one so you could call us on the whatsapp line and if there's another number i'll also share with you let's take your message good morning to you to prince iotech from arena market you said 
Uh, it's a beautiful Wednesday morning. I agree with you. It's only a thief that knows how to catch a thief. Gandhi J and the wife should go to prison, but because they are in APC, this matter will die down. In a civilized country, no one is above the law. But here in Nigeria, some people are above the law. I think we'll ask a very good question, which an answer should be given now. We know how much it takes to do one kilometer of road. This is an avenue that the federal government wants to milk its citizens. The federal government are not transparent to its citizens. It's quite unfortunate. May God help us in this country called Nigeria. Thank you so much. All right, you could also try 0802 633 Sorry about the glitch. We seem to be having with a line this morning i'll take this number again we'll try that for this morning 0802 633 4097 and also you could call us on whatsapp 0817 a thousand apologies you're still listening to the papers and we're reaching you from vop 90.3 fm good morning Hello. Hello, good morning. How are you? I'm good. I can hear you. Good morning. Okay. All right, go ahead. I can hear you. All right, let's take the next. Good morning. Yeah. Turn down the volume on your radio set, please. I can hear you. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. I can Hello. hear you. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Oscar. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, the problem we have here is the go that the government didn't take the Nigeria people serious because we never ask questions and we don't take them serious. Look at the project they are doing Lagos, Caraba, whatever they call it. Now look at the the the, the what they are talking about. Who do they discuss the project with? How do they come about the project? Now, look at the massive, mass distance that people put on those in those areas. Now, they are talking about maybe demolishing those things. They don't consider Nigeria when they do things, which is very bad. Which is very, very bad. They don't even think of all the, the properties around that area. The people that are going to destroy their economies. Please tell President Tunumbu to be careful and... The, think about Nigeria and consider them when they are when they want to do things. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning Saola. Man. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. How about yourself? I'm very well, thank you. As ATL. All right. Yes, ATL is uh, I mean this is um two forty four AM in the morning. So that's how Thanks for being I awake to join us. <laughs> I, yes, I mean this is my time. BOP, I mean, I had to establish myself on that BOP thing. Thank you. Every month, no problem. Um, I just want to, I mean, sorry I had to use that word. Uh, Badjue, this is a common Yoruba word. Uh, when you say Badjue, I mean, and that's cheating, basically, literally. So most of the things going on in Nigeria is always a Badjue if, if uh, the government is not doing bad year for for the people the people themselves know how to bad you for the, for the yes mm -hmm. so it's all game i mean it's all gamey kind of a thing in nigeria but uh well again i still believe uh solutions are at the fingertips of the leaders so and which they, of the stories ready. which of the stories uh, is giving you this uh, perspective now uh, the stories, I mean, the stories of, I mean, corruption. I mean, that's the, that's the major one. Mm. I mean, if uh, if uh, if Babari Gal uh, mobile banking can be established and is a member of the APC, and basically based on what I uh, allegedly know, they said that uh, once you do become an APC, all your sins are forgiven, right? Mm. I mean, that's what. That's what, yeah. So if your sins are forgiven, then basically what we are seeing with all this corruption everywhere, 
corruption here, corruption there. I mean, if the government wants to do it, I mean, this this man can can put on a legacy. Yeah. I mean, that the, the major legacy in his life will have been to fight that corruption and stop pulling pulling whoever. I don't care. Hello. Okay. It, oh, the line went off. I couldn't hear you anymore. But well, you made your one thirty seconds already. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for calling. What's your name? Hello. Good morning, Madam Cordelia. Good morning. What's your name? My name is Peter Osifo. I'm calling from Abanaje, Nkosu. All right, Mr. Osifo. You see, a lot of people have been quarrelling, asking me why, why that they banned you here, banned you there. Now, Mr. Osifo, no. we're going to say, hold I, on, I hold on, banned. hold but on. Please, I'm using the position to clarify something. Okay. If I'm from Peter Osifo, an analyst in your studio. No, there, no, don't, like, don't mention analyst. names. Just it's go. It's always abusive on uh, people. In fact, he has abused me severely. Okay. Okay, you know what, um, Mr. Osifo? Mr. Osifo, Osifo, uh, 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 Mudia, wait. So you're going to do your own. You won't insult anybody in return. You're just going to make your point and there will be no problems. Yeah? Okay, your time starts now. That's why I said all sides, all Jews. When I started. Oh, yeah, carry on. The North the northern elder forum talking about you know saying that uh, they are disappointed in Bola and Tribu and that of course that he may not even, they may not even vote for him come 2027. To me this intention is dead on an arrival because they now say that Tribu has no godfather. He's very much independent of himself and that is what you expect of a leader. You understand? Instead of you know being tied to the headphone of any other person. I've got a lot of in Nigeria. So I'm advising Northern Goddard and uh, 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 to think the other way. You understand? And support the government. Even during the time of Buari, Buari did a lot when it comes to ethnicity and the fact uh, tribalism compared to what the government is doing now. So they should not blame Tinubu for now. It's fine. It's there. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Shifu, hold on. You still have like 30 seconds. I w want to ask you a question. I want to see how it okay. is. Now, what do you think of Atiku asking that they should let us know the full price, the real amount they are using to make the uh, lagos Calabar Costa Road? What do you think of that? You have in 15 seconds. Tell me. They have answered him now. No, they've not they answered, answered him. him. He, he has asked seven more they, questions. Should they answer with the full they, figures for us to know? The presidency has answered him. So uh, I don't think uh, he has any point. He's just <laughs> okay. trying to... All right, Josifo, thank you very much. I understand. All right, I'll take more messages from YouTube. Alex, oh, thank you for joining us. It's a beautiful show. Hey, Jiro, Rufai, The Fire, Cordelia, always top notch. Thank you. Uh, and you also said VOP becoming the ultimate voice of the people. God bless the work you guys are doing and bless the station. I say amen to that. Thank you very much for the support. Good morning. Thank How are you? you? Good morning. Yes, Madam welcome. Cardelli. What's your name, sir? Yeah, my name is Undiluted Dozma. I'm calling from Ladipo Matthew. Okay, Ladipo. okay, prepare them. Okay, now. Uh, Madam, Madam Cordelia, there is something I, that is surprising me in this country. In whose kennel must we be calling on television or calling in radio station and be saying, hey, this kennel is very good, this our government is very good. I never see it in Nigeria. Okay. Again, I want to com see comment on what happened in Ogoma. That Ogoma is still, uh, there is still soldiers there. Mm. And it's unfair. It's very, very unfair. There is still soldiers there. Those people are human beings. Eh? Mm. People from Ogoma, they are human beings. Let Mr. President withdraw all those soldiers so that those people will sleep well. Now they are not sleeping well there. They are all human beings. Again, the, uh, uh, our insecurity in Nigeria again. Let Mr. President fight everything full. I know that Bola Tinubu can fight, do that. Except all those kapas that is the top cutting of confusion in Nigeria. Let Mr. President wake up so that they will not spoil his tenor. That is all I have to say. 
Thank right. you and God bless you. Thank you so much. I have your message. Your name, uh, Collins from Spain. You say Nigerian leaders are treating Nigerians badly because they don't have passion for the country. <sighs> that is sad to hear. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Cordelia. Good morning. Morning. How are you? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Andy calling from Maf Luku. All right, Andy, you're welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Madam Cordelia, you know, eh, I keep on asking this person whenever I call VOP. Where are the economic team that President Tinubu took to Charting House in London that he told the whole world that he has the best team to turn Nigeria around, both economic, insecurity, and otherwise? Where are these team that Nigerians are suffering like this team now? Mm. I can't really understand after he has shown the whole world that he had the best team, he will do a teamwork, he has this, he has that. Look at where we find ourselves today. I can't understand it. And secondly, where are all these activists that rally around, gather themselves, and fought Jonathan during his tenure? Where are all these activists? Where are they now? That all these things are happening in Nigeria? So which of, the, which of the stories actually is hurting you so much to ask these questions? Both economic, okay, look at airline issue, hiking of price, reducing of price. Now, I believe there's no regulation in all these things. Hmm. And nobody's checkmating them. When you increase this uh, price of this ticket, what are your basis? Why did, why did you re increase this to this level? So these airlines can carry this low price, all this why, and people Imagine. are paying this you know, high cost of you know, fee. Okay. It, so it, you can carry this price and yeah. land safely, and you, can, <laughs> you are not doing it. All right, it's 90 seconds. Thank you so much. Sister Thank you. Cordelia, I, I thought, I, in fact, I got help Nigeria. Amen I'm, to that. All right, we'll take this as the last one. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought somebody will, it was pending. We'll take maybe one more if he does come in before I wrap this up. And uh, we'll be doing this again tomorrow morning, about 9.30 to 10.30. I'll be here. We'll also be doing this and that. We'll, uh, in honor of the World Autism Awareness Month, other things being equal, we're going to have a mother join us who has a special needs child she will share with us how she's been managing and coping and all that good morning madam good morning to you jude from ajawa state um peter sifo is a seriously biased being why is he shying away from the question you asked him <laughs> answer is blowing in the wind morning please let the presidency give account of what atiku um asked there is nothing bad in that for Atiku to ask for the explanation that is good for our democracy. But I know that they will not do so. Instead, they will abuse him. Thanks, Daniel from Ikotun. And the Atiku team has said that, no, instead of the abuses that you're using to respond, respond with the facts. Let us know what are we doing, how much are we spending, ending on this project why are we starting from a co-atlantic and stopping at lekki free trade zone all in nigeria for that huge amount 1.06 trillion for how many around 47 or so kilometers what is this about atiku has asked the questions let's see if they will answer der 32 has also said be careful do not demolish things just like that. Take note, these are businesses, these are people, do not destroy what has been built over the years. You know what, later on, we'll still take one or two of these topics and still look at them from around 9.30 to 10.30. Here we are, good morning guys. How are you today? Are you good? Did you rest well? Good morning. Good morning. You did, Abby. Yes, when I was coming to work this morning, the road was so free. Mm, so it's a holiday. Free. Holiday. Seriously. In Casina <laughs> said I had that even Friday trees for the My Friday. sister the state brought up Friday for the Eid celebration. But you know, uh, it, enough enjoyment. 
it, according to some people, it's good that you are not in Castina. You mm -hmm. know, that's how some people call it. In because Castina. if for pain you more, you are working all through. But in the southeast, you know, normally Mondays is probably uh, sit at home. So they still do that sit at they home. Still do it. Hmm. Wow, they still do it. Huh. They okay. still do it. Okay. Someone, someone, someone was saying, ah, this one they say that uh, the extended uh, day, the holiday, uh, uh, was due to they did not see moon or they did not see sun. Mm. I was they asking them. The those people counting the moon time, are they confused? <laughs> No, no, more not quick come out. Maybe the eclipse disturbed it. You know, it was it was busy in America, in America trying yeah. to do solar uh, eclipse. So oh, you know, corruption uh, can also disturb. Oh, maybe they needed they needed <laughs> light to do it. Maybe there was no light or they are bandless. So uh, the moon are, is even angry with Nigeria. I, I, I refuse to appear. They reached so angry, mm. but we are very happy finally, and you're celebrating Eid Mubarak, my people. Uh, wishing a very good holiday enjoy it and remember to also pray for nigeria because exactly. president said pray for nigeria senator say pray, pray for, for nigeria, nigeria. governor say pray for nigeria even the representatives pray, pray for, for nigeria, nigeria. councillor zunka pray, pray for, for nigeria. nigeria the road sweepers pray, pray, pray for, for nigeria what of nigerians themselves pray, pray for ourselves our <laughs> so pray, we go pray. i hope we not go pray so we we'll go turn to pray i go pray i go, I go pray. pray if i don't Before pray, pray. <laughs> Oh, Who is not making a mess of us now? <laughs> because Nigerians, we maybe have, now our village people. <laughs> even the village people don't tire for us. We have prayed, 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 prayed. I think it's the prayers that is also helping uh, us. That we never they should just end it with "So help me God." Mm. That's the summary yeah. of everything. <laughs> because when we pray, it's like Nigerians pray. Eh? As we pray, finish. Some of us they go back to evil. We do not work. Ah, we pray without really working it. Mm. And those in power self now Bible they take so and they are not helping matters too. That yeah. was what, that was like why that one man said that they should not be using Bible or Quran to swear. They should use Amadia. I don't know why you robots got their own. They use it and swear. And not the else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is just a sad situation. Every celebration during Easter, they also told us uh, be patient, mm. pray. Between mm. that Easter to today, the things that would have happened will make you go, mm. Mm. That's you know? why we need powers. Your powers never help in any way. Ah. Your, uh, your major power holder, your, your power holder, responded. Shebi, he has gone to London. Uh, 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 he's in London he's, now. He's demonstrating powers there. Because he's over 16 years now, the raw. kind of powers, raw powers that he has. Raw. So you just want to drop some in London. 17th and of back. April, Rondo mm. mm. He has never done fake miracles. In Daboski Bahosa, <laughs> has landed in Rondo. No, no, Sabi. Me, I have landed. Oh, did he use that piece? You see, they are trying to choke every yes are we here they are trying to you know there's what my people say that um what up bakaria ibe yana kodiko parayana joe you call my name inside <laughs> that's why it's happening now they want to put more sand in, inside this gary yes but the guy has raised a lot because i watch him on channels when he was and if the government discussing. doesn't stand up to defend it will, it will, it will affect it will. our that economy is my favorite song place. for now it will just be yeah they won't make a live now everything everything will go well for you guys amen all right i'm cordelia best see you at 9 30.